What's up, everyone? Charlie here. I wanted to read you the weekly commentary from BlackRock this week, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at this. It provides some very good insight into the macroeconomic um, economy on the broader scale um, and different parts of the world outside of the U.S. So let's go ahead and take a look at what they have to say for January 17th, 2023. Brighter backdrop for emerging assets. Emerging markets have weathered tightening financial conditions. We now see a relatively good backdrop for emerging market assets as emerging market rates peak and China reopens. Stocks added to gains and bond yields fell as markets priced in Federal Reserve rate cuts later in 2023. We don't think inflation will cool enough to allow for cuts. China GDP data due this week are unlikely to capture the rapid reopening that's underway. The Bank of Japan could surprise with policy changes. And what they're talking about there, if you've been following uh, the situation in Japan, they're considering actually loosening their monetary policy, which could be very surprising indeed. Now, the emerging markets EM have weathered rapid rate hikes in developed markets, or DM, and central banks were ahead of DM peers in tightening and high commodity prices helped EM producers. We see the backdrop for EM assets turning more positive as EM rates peak. DM central banks pause, the United States dollar weakens, and China reopens. By contrast, the damage of higher rates has yet to fully materialize in developing markets. We prefer selected EM equities and bonds over DM peers as a result. Relative retreat map here, emerging equity relative performance in the United States dollar from 2021 to 2023. This is why I've dubbed it the yin yang. As you can see here, it's quite mirroring of itself. We have the emerging market equity relative to developed, and we have the US dollar index in the darker blue up top. Now, emerging market economies proved resilient to what should have been a big hit from tightening global financial conditions as the Fed embarked on the fastest hiking cycle since the 1980s. We see several reasons why. EM external balances have improved, central banks were ahead of DM in policy tightening, and higher commodity prices limited the fallout. Yet EM equities have underperformed DM peers, down nearly 20% since mid-2021, which is the orange line that we're going to look at, I guess, down below, when many EM central banks began to tighten their policy. This slump might be warranted if there were some systemic risk for EM looming, but we don't see that now. So you're hearing it from BlackRock, don't see much systemic risk coming out of the emerging markets from BlackRock. We think the long emerging market stocks slide and recent rallies show a lot of economic damage is now the price as the emerging market backdrop turns more supportive. The US dollar's retreat, yellow line, which we'll see what they're referring to in a second, and China's reopening rally also helped emerging market assets in recent months. What are they referring to here? Maybe I'm too far zoomed in. I don't see a yellow blue line unless this is the wrong colors. Okay. So we're just going to assume that the orange line is the uh, emerging markets, which is the lighter blue. And then the other they're, they're referring to would be the darker blue. So U S here on the top emerging markets here on the bottom with relative to their developed Anyways, we think the backdrop will turn more positive for emerging markets, building on recent resilience. EM generally has higher levels of currency reserves, smaller current account deficits, improved external balances, and better debt maturity than they did in past DM tightening cycles that sparked volatility. The weaker links amongst the EM are small and not a broader threat in our view. We think that this all helped EM avoid a taper tantrum type investor fight when global financial conditions tightened. In fact, investors favored emerging markets, our data shows, inflows into emerging market equity exchange traded funds hit a record in 2022. But we all know that was not from investors, it was from institutions. I like how they're trying to play that off in this article. We also see slowing tightening cycles in emerging markets. Some EM central banks were as much as a year ahead of developed markets and hiking rates to combat inflation. We expect some divergence. Inflation expectations in Brazil are declining, but the energy crunch in Europe is likely to keep inflation pressures higher in the emerging market countries of the continent. We see DM central banks pausing as the economic damage of their tightening becomes clearer and as inflation cools from highs but still stays above pre-COVID levels. 
a pause in the Fed's rate hikes would likely help spur a further retreat in the U.S. dollar. The risk? Markets have been pricing in Fed rate cuts later this year, something we don't expect to happen given persistent inflation. China's reopening also brightens the view on emerging markets as domestic demand restarts. Chinese assets represent a sizable share of emerging market indexes, so we see overall emerging markets as a beneficiary of the reopening. Rising Chinese demand is likely to benefit other emerging market exporters with strong ties to China as growth rebounds too. We estimate China's economic growth will likely be above 6% in 2023, but it will be uh, tempered by falling exports as good demands cool and with spending shifts in developed economies away from goods and towards services. That makes consumer spending and business investment even more critical, engaging how strong China's recovery can be. We prefer Chinese assets to DM peers as well. Structural risks, including an aging population and geopolitical tensions with the U.S. persist, but a strong rally in risk assets since October is becoming harder for some tactical investors to ignore. Our bottom line, we see a more positive EM backdrop as DM central banks pause, the dollar weakens, and China reopens. Yin yang, baby. We take a selective approach across EM with a wide range of factors at play, from external balances to idiosyncratic sovereign risk. We prefer EM over DM stocks. We think more damage is in the price from earlier hiking cycles. We're neutral EM debt due to higher commodity prices and prefer it long or we prefer it over long-term DM government bonds. Long-term DM yields don't reflect the term premium or compensation for risk. We think investors will demand in this regime of higher macro volatility. So that's basically the gist of this. Um, So basically, you heard it from BlackRock, the biggest investment asset manager on the planet, that they're taking a bigger stake in China over the DM countries. And as far as their granular view, this is a six to 12 month tactical view on selected assets versus broad global asset classes by level of conviction from January of this month. Developed markets, they are underweight. Earnings, expectations, and valuations don't fully reflect recession risk. We prefer a sectoral approach. Energy, financials, and healthcare. You might want to write that down somewhere. Energy, financials, and healthcare. United States, we are underweight. The Fed is set to raise rates into restrictive territory. Earnings downgrades are starting, but don't yet reflect the coming recession. The coming recession. We are underweight on Europe. The energy price shock and policy tightening raise stagflation risks. As far as the United Kingdom, we are underweight. We find valuations expensive after their strong relative performance versus other DM markets thanks to energy sector exposure. Japan, we are neutral. We likely or we like still easy monetary policy and increasing dividend payouts. Slowing global growth is a risk. China, we are neutral. Activity is restarting, but we see China on a path to lower growth. Tighter state control of the economy makes Chinese assets riskier in our view. What about emerging markets? We are neutral. Slowing global growth will weigh on emerging markets. Within the asset classes, we lean towards commodity exporters over importers. Asia x Japan. We are neutral. China's near-term cyclical rebound is a positive, yet we don't see valuations compelling enough to turn overweight on x Japan. Long U.S. Treasuries. We are underweight. We see long-term yields moving up further as investors demand a greater term premium. Short U.S. Treasuries. We are neutral. We remain invested in the front end due to attractive income potential. Global inflation-linked bonds. We are overweight. We see break-even inflation rates underpricing the persistent inflation we expect. European government bonds. Underweight. We expect term premium to raise, long-term yields, and high inflation to persist. Rate hikes are a risk to peripheral spreads. UK glitz, or I'm sorry, UK gilts. We are underweight. Perceptions of fiscal credibility have not fully recovered. We prefer short-dated gilts for income. China government bonds. We are neutral. Policymakers have been slow to loosen policy to offset the slowdown, and they are less attractive than DM bonds. Global IG credit. We are significantly overweight. High quality corporate strong balance sheets may imply IG credit could weather a recession better than stocks. U.S. agency mortgage-backed securities. We are overweight. We see the asset class as a high quality exposure within a diversified bond allocation. 
Soaring U.S. mortgage rates boost potential income. Global high yield. We are neutral. We prefer up in quality credit exposures amid a worsening macro backdrop. Emerging hard currency. Neutral. We see support from higher commodities prices, yet it is vulnerable to rising U.S. yields. Emergency local currency. We are neutral. EM debt after its strong run. We see better opportunities for income in DMs. And then lastly, Asia fixed income. We are neutral amid a worsening macro outlook. We don't find valuations compelling enough yet to turn more positive on the asset class. That's basically it, y'all. So anyways, let's just recap here real quick. Things are changing, right? The U.S. is no longer going to be the driver of economic growth. If you read their weekly commentary last week, this was documented by BlackRock saying that China has overtaken the United States as the global driver of uh, of growth. Let me find that for you. Uh, let's see, what was it? Friday the 13th, 12th, 11th, one nine, one oh nine. Oh, I missed it. Ah, damn it. Oh, that was the one from today. I need the one from last week, man. Okay, so right here, our tactical views. These three shifts we see ahead in 2023 reinforce our tactical views and are why we maintain our most defensive stance. Earnings expectations for 2023 are still not fully reflecting the DM recessions we expect in our view. That's why we're underweight DM stocks. We stand ready to turn more positive on DM stocks when more of the economy or the economic damage we see ahead is in the price of our assessment of market risk sentiment. And until that improves, China replacing the U.S. as the driver of global growth underpins our preference for emerging market equities, including Chinese equities over DM peers. And the sentence before that was supposed to read, we stand ready to turn more positive on developing market stocks when more of the economic damage we see ahead is in the price or our assessment of market risk sentiment improves. And then again, China replacing the U.S., as the driver of global growth underpins the preference for emerging market equities, including Chinese equities over DM peers. Within fixed income, we see more attractive opportunities to earn income and investment grade credit. Uh, Bottom line, 2022 was a year of soaring inflation, rapid rate hikes, and a pandemic-induced lockdowns in China. We see volatility ahead in 2023, but expect the year to be shaped by big shifts from last year, recessions in developed markets, inflation falling and central banks pausing their rate hikes, and of course, China reopening. We'll likely turn more positive on risk assets after gauging what's in the price and market risk sentiment, a central theme of our new investment playbook. There you have it. Follow the money, people, and this is how you do it. Get off social media and read something worthwhile.